why do we have to call dark matter dark? Why can't we just call it a uh, minority matter or something? You racist universe! Let's be PC here, right? Hey guys, Steve Cubed here. Uh, today I just wanted to review the new American Museum of Natural History uh, planetarium movie called Dark Universe. Mysterious, right? Well, um, they took away Journey to the Stars with Whoopi Goldberg, which was a mainstay there. So I decided to look at the new one and review it for you guys. So, I mean, just to break it down, Um, if you don't know, um, Journey to the Stars and this new movie are movies that played in the planetarium in the American Museum of Natural History in New York City. They got a planetarium circular dome and they play a movie on the um, circular screen that plays um, out basically what stars are, what galaxies are, explains um, constellations, um, stuff like that. And I'm talking like this voice, it sounds really mysterious. I don't know why I'm doing that. Uh, now I'm starting to sound like Batman. Welcome to the new Planetarium show. Space Batman action figure not included. The new movie. Let's just talk about it real quick. So I, I, I thought about it. There are essentially four things I really like about it and four things that I am not as crazy about. So the first thing I really like about it. As always with all of these um, Planetarium movies, these special effects are absolutely gorgeous. So when you see the planets, when you see the stars, the galaxies, it's absolutely wonderful. So if you're seeing it even just for that, it's totally worth it. So that's number one. Two, um, I really like the, the angle they took here. So like a lot of times with the older movies, what they do is they tell you this fact, that fact. And they'd be, be like, a star is this old. This is how they create a star. Um, this is how, like, uh, you know, why our galaxy is the way it is. In this show, what they do instead is they go through the history of how we know what we know. So they basically go through the scientific method. So you learn the same amount of stuff, but you learn it in a much more, okay, this is how we discovered that this was true, which is much more of a thought-provoking, um, process-oriented way of going about it, which I kind of liked. Um, and I could see why other people wouldn't like it that way. But you would be wrong! The third thing was, I really liked um, Neil deGrasse Tyson was the one who voiced it. Um, he's the guy who's going to be, um, he's a director at the American Museum of Natural History. He's bringing back Cosmos, which Carl Sagan used to do, and he's going to bring it back. So I thought he did a really great job with the voice acting. The fourth thing is that this new show is much more evenly paced. The old ones, if you look back at the show, you'd be like, yeah, in the beginning, and yeah, at the end, you'd be super inspired, but in the middle, you'd lose a little bit there. I felt like this one was really evenly paced. The whole time, there wasn't any point where I was losing my interest severely. And um, I actually saw it twice in the last two weeks, so um, I definitely had opportunities to, um, but I didn't. So that was really good. So let's just talk quickly about the negatives, though. Uh, this, this thing is definitely not perfect. I definitely have some things that I have some bones to pick with it. Or some, um, light to pick at the dark matter. Join the dark side! Oh, no. Fucking fuck! <laughs> First thing, let's go back at Neil deGrasse Tyson. So I said he was a positive, but I also think he was kind of a negative. So like, positive as in, you got this like guy who's a serious scientist, he knows what he's doing, he loves it, and he's a charismatic guy. But on the flip side, he's no actor. So before we had Whoopi Goldberg, Tom Hanks, Liam Neeson, these kind of amazing voices acting stuff out. Uh, and then we got Neil deGrasse Tyson, who's okay, but he's no fan. You know, like he's not gonna be winning any Oscars for, for eating a box of chocolates. You know, life is like a box of chocolates. There's always that one nasty flavor, like coconut. Who eats coconut, right? So, the second thing is, um, I didn't like, the, the ending wasn't as inspiring as some of the other ones that I'd seen. Um, so the ending was more like, 
you know, and we'll learn more in the future, and we'll discover more, and it'll be awesome. Um, which is a great message, but it just didn't inspire me or hit me here the same way the others one did. Like when it ended, I was just like, oh, it ended. I'm going to go now, I guess. So it didn't hit me in the same way. I'm inspired! The third thing is that um, I thought that the special effects, even though they were amazing, um, they didn't quite always match up with what he was saying. Like, he would say, um, look at this, and he would explain like all these things and all these numbers. Like, the universe is, you know, x times big, like times 10 to the whatever power um, large. And they would just show these little blotches, and it didn't really capture the largeness of what they were dealing with always. The third thing is that I think it may um, go over the head of a lot of younger kids. So I think that, you know, normally when you go to the planetarium, you think it's geared towards younger audiences. And there were a, young, a lot of younger kids when I went there. But I do feel like a lot of this stuff, especially when they talked about dark matter and dark energy, would go over people's heads, especially younger kids and people who aren't quite as science-minded. Um, and the fourth thing is something that I don't think is a negative, but I just wanted to warn you in case you saw it and you may see it as a negative. The fourth thing is they pretty much say, um, they talk about dark matter and dark energy for about a good 10 minutes in the video, and at the end they go, hey, but we don't really know, and we're looking to find out. So it's like, WTF, right? Like, you spend all this time showing these fancy special effects and talking about all this stuff, and then you're like, hey, what? You know what? I don't know, man. It's like, well, why you waste my time? Why did I pay that ticket? You know? What the heck, right? But, to me, that is science. Science is the discovery, the process of constantly learning, but also knowing what we don't know, so we can learn more about that stuff that we don't know, which is cool. So I personally am okay with it, but I could see why someone might not. Okay, um, so we've got overall, we got about four positives, four negatives. Um, even though we got four and four, I still highly recommend you go, especially if you're a science lover, especially if you're a total geek or, no or dork. Um, again, I might not take younger kids, uh, or if I do, just have them enjoy it for the special effects. But for anyone who's like maybe middle school age um, and up, I think it would be great for them. This is a really important tip. Um, when you walk into the theater, you'll see that um, there are certain areas that are better than others. And normally I wouldn't say that for a planetarium show since it's a dome, but they have a lot of spinning effects and also a lot of effects where they zoom in right at you. And it's going in a specific angle where if you're sitting in a specific place, it won't zoom in on you, it's sort of zooming off to the side, so it doesn't have the same effect. And that, and that spinning rolly thing, also it's like spinning to the side, it doesn't look as cool. Um, so the best places to sit are basically right when you walk into the theater, directly across and sort of directly back. If you're, uh, when you go into the theater, if you're going off to the left or to the right seating areas, they're not quite as good. To the left, to the left, is where you don't want to be. So, let me know if you enjoyed the show. Um, I would love to hear from people who've seen the show also, just tell me what you think. Also, uh, if you went to the Museum of Natural History or the Planetarium, I would love, 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 love to hear what your favorite exhibit in the museum is because I am a total geek, I love museums, I love this museum, and I would love to share my loveness with you guys. Okay? Peace. Geeks unite! Okay, <laughs> I'm not gonna keep that part of the video. That was totally weird. Or am I?